probably three areas within events that um, sort of I'm seeing at the moment. I've worked in kind of all sort of aspects of events. So client side, I'm now working agency side and I also regulated events as a venue. Um, probably the main one, which the hospitality guys also touched on a bit was experience. So people are coming to events now and really wanting, it, wanting an experience. You know, it's no longer about kind of coming and sitting in the audience and, you know, having death by PowerPoint or death by presentation. Um, people actually really want to get involved. And there's sort of a lot of new technologies now that are letting um, audience members interact with events. So they can be tweeting in questions or um, answering questions live while the event's happening and actually helping to develop the content that's being delivered at the event. Um, yeah, and, and also just in terms of sort of the food experience as well, and it goes to what the guys were saying about hospitality and people kind of having a lot more awareness about food within the event space, you know, the same thing happens there. People are wanting to come, they're wanting to kind of get involved with the food. Um, I had an event recently where we had sort of ingredients that people could come and grab their own ingredients and then have a chef make something just for them. So it's that kind of self-service aspect, um, customization of food. So that sort of stuff is happening a lot. Um, another one is big data. So, um, you know, clients are really now after um, results for the event. So um, trying to kind of peg the money that they've spent on the event um, against results. So there's a lot of sort of work going into um, capturing data from attendees before the event, um, capturing data during the event, and then um, capturing data post-event. So data capture and mining is um, a big thing at the moment. It's only going to get bigger as sort of technology um, assists with that. Um, and then the third thing is um, that I'm finding really interesting is non-attendance. So obviously, um, you know, you put an event on and you might get sort of half or 60% of the people that registered, but there's still 40% of your audience that you can do something with. So there's a lot more work going into sort of activating or engaging those people that didn't come to the event. So as I said before, it's about sort of reaching out to that audience and um, engaging them with questions around, um, uh, you know, the content that's happening at the event or filming things that you can push out to them afterwards or getting in touch with them after the event and gathering data um, on them. So it's really thinking not just about the people that are coming to your event, but also about the people who didn't come and how you can still sort of get some benefit from those people. Look, I definitely agree with what Grant said. I mean, we've got a large event department. We've got about 40 in our core team and we scale between events between up to 5,000 people down to down to just a meeting, which could be 20 people. Um, I think the, the common trend and the common thread is two things, food and experience. Um, they definitely want more for, their, more for their money. They definitely want... Um, the event to be interactive and they definitely want better food you know the food is a big focus with Maryvale as well our business is food is a common theme I think as um, Adam was saying before the public are very aware of food everybody's much better educated people people know what they want um, so our group uh, we were just doing some stats the other day and bit, since 2012 our business our food side of our business has grown by 74 percent um, and we currently have 2,200 staff and 53 venues and we have five more to open this year which is a, which is a huge amount but and every single venue um, is predominantly food focused and it's all about accessibility and it's all about um, getting more involved with the community. This just goes to what James said, the food is the one thing that they're just not prepared to compromise with. So, you know, while they're pe prepared to compromise with theming or maybe a cheaper venue, the, f the food is just something that can't be touched. But just a couple of key things that sort of are happening in my space is um, probably there's a bit more of the event, event budget that's being spent on brand activations. So smaller scale activations where a brand can really be highlighted. And I think um, sort of the reason for that is um, just around sort of how consumers are operating with brands. So there's a lot more engagement on social media directly with brands and consumers. So it makes sense for a brand to be out there sort of engaging consumers directly um, and getting sort of those people to communicate about the, the, the experience they're having with the brand through their own channels. So, um, I think I'm seeing probably a bit more of the traditional advertising spend going on a brand activation sort of um, model within the event space. Um, and this is sort of nothing new, but um, just in terms of a sort of focus at the moment is um, 
like I said before, a lot of events are becoming about um, outcomes and um, you know, the extravagance that sort of was there for events before the global financial crisis is definitely not back. Um, and there's definitely a sort of um, feeling at the moment where you want to be putting on a quality event, but you don't want to be seen as flashy. And um, just sort of in regards to that as well, there's a lot more sort of attention in the planning and preparation stages on sort of the outcomes and what the event will deliver, um, where those data points are. And, um, you know, when we're putting the event budget together, we're actually putting aside money to focus on the results. So it might be, you know, filming the event and how it's going to be pushed out later or, um, you know, how um, social media is going to be used after the event. So it's sort of, yeah, more of that sort of outcome focus. So, so from a training perspective, kind of looking at that, you know, and, and I'll kind of throw this out there. Maybe, maybe it's a, a, an area that we could look at is, you know, looking at creative space, linking marketing through, really driving that as, uh, as what that looks like from a social media perspective in terms of ensuring that the people that, that you're taking on to run those events have got a, a, a potentially more diversified skill set. Yeah, I Would think... That be something you'd look for? Yeah, I think probably um, at the moment more sort of creative... Um, events are happening so um, you know how they how people can kind of engage artists in events or um, you know how they can put on experiences where people are actually interacting with different um, events whether it be food or um, content so really kind of that creative skill sets um, quite valued at the moment um, and yeah the technology piece that's kind of coming down the pipeline is going to be another big one as well which um, you know is changing very rapidly and probably in Australia it's sort of not quite there yet but there's a a big wave of event technology that's that's kind of coming down the pipeline. So I think the next topic that we wanted to go into and, and really ask was technology. Um, you know, and, and we as an organisation are doing a, a bit of work with uh, with Deloitte at the moment, and there's a there's a report that they've done based on digital disruption. And the reason that I mention this is, you know, hospitality, tourism, events these areas and, and what they're saying is it's going to be, it's a short fuse but a big bang. So basically very, very short turnaround times in what's happening with, uh, with, with technology. But the, the, the disruption that's going to happen is, is absolutely huge. You know, education's the other side. It's a slow fuse but will be a big bang in terms of the, the, the changes there. So I suppose I want to kind of ask a few, a few questions in terms of technology. And I think one of the, 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 the stats that I read not so long back is 57% of buying decisions are actually made before anybody is spoken to, which obviously links to the fact that, uh, you know, the, the, the digital areas of, of uh have really disrupted that. So I suppose, if I, you know, I think the events industry, as I said earlier, if we, if we maybe start, start with Grant this time in terms of where you feel, uh, you know, digital dis or, or technology can, uh, has either uh, revolutionised the industry and or changed the way that you've had to do business. So there's, you know, registration booking sites like Eventbrite, um, you know, there's cloud-based planning um, software that you can buy as a subscription, so you're no longer buying, you know, big packages of software that you're hosting locally. Um, you know, you can go to a conference now and if you've got a mobile phone and you've got the right application on it that the event's pushed out to you, they can track you all around the conference, you know, they can see which stands you're going to. Um, there's all that kind of RFID technology that's coming down the pipeline that, you know, people haven't really sort of um, unlocked yet, a lot of it coming from the US. Um, I saw an um, application uh, the other week where, you know, we've got two microphones here tonight, um, but with this application, if you guys had it on your phone, you could actually speak into your phone and your voice would come over the PA system. So now the people in the audience are now kind of being part of the event without having to have a microphone sort of dodging around and going through people and things like that. So there's like some crazy technology that's coming down the pipeline. Um, just a couple of um, examples from my um, recent experience. I um, did a conference for 700 farmers um, a couple of months ago and it was an industry event and we used an um, application called Poll Everywhere. And essentially a speaker would get up and start discussing a topic that was relevant, agribusiness, and um, we'd then put a, a couple of questions up behind the speaker and anyone with a mobile phone could um, text in their answer or how they felt about a particular subject. Um, and that sort of data was polled throughout the day. And at the end of the day, we had a research guy pull together all of the kind of data from the, the um, 
people in the industry and that went into a report about how the industry felt about particular topics. So people now at the conference are actually becoming part of the content that's being developed. Um, and with Poll Everywhere as well, you know, the question was being asked and um, someone was also um, uh, tweeting the question to people externally and then instantly being able to say what the responses were from the room. So you're starting a discussion offline as well. So that's kind of quite interesting. Um, and then uh, I did another event recently. Um, it was a fundraising event and we used a digital um, raffle service. So no longer raffle tickets. People actually entered um, using their mobile phone. Um, so, you know, you were getting instant sort of responses on who's bidding on what and what raffle prizes are being won. And um, for the participant, um, you know, they're bidding on something on their mobile phone and then getting a text message saying that their bid's been accepted. And, you know, if they were the winner, they're being notified on their mobile phone. So it's all kind of digital. But um, as much as that's sort of really interesting, sort of um, it also increases the risk around events. So just in terms of those couple of examples, um, uh, with the digital raffle, we were encouraging people to use the venue's Wi-Fi, which halfway through the event went down, so people couldn't actually participate. So um, you actually have to think through all of the things that could go wrong if the technology doesn't work, and then what are you going to do if that happens? So what's the sort of backup plan, which um, in our case was reverting back to a paper system. So um, there's still a little bit of work to be done. I guess just in terms of events, um, in terms of sort of how marketing happens, it hasn't really changed so much. Um, you've still got to put aside a marketing budget. Um, you've still got to identify the people that you want at your event and um, deliver a compelling reason why they should attend. The, the why is probably the main thing. Um, and also kind of picking the distribution channel that's going to fit that audience. So, you know, if you're holding an event for kind of very old people, you're not going to sort of promote it through social media only, that sort of thing. Um, so nothing much has changed in that respect, but I guess there's a lot of sort of um, interdependencies in marketing that happen. So for example, you know, people are doing outdoor media now um, and encouraging people then to sort of um, cross promote sort of how things are happening in the outdoor space with social media. So it's like putting a, you know, decent picture or a decent graphic on an outdoor um, banner and encouraging people to sort of text in or, um, you know, go to a website or something. So it's sort of how you're taking people from one medium through to another and then through to the purchase decision. So that's kind of um, something that's sort of a little bit interesting at the moment. Um, just in terms of social and events, um, obviously, you know, people are promoting events through social media and with um, tools like Eventbrite, they actually can help you do that and um, help um, distribute the event message. Um, but social can also take a lot of time and um, a lot of resourcing and you can't just kind of put a message out there and think that's the end of it. It's sort of a two-way conversation. So you've constantly got to have someone on there responding to people. Um, the other thing with social media and events is everyone that comes to an event has a phone and has an audience. So it's very um, easy for them to um, talk about the bad things that happen at an event. So if something goes wrong, if a staff member's rude, if the food's no good, if you know they're waiting in line for a long time, that message gets out instantly to the world. So it's actually put a lot more pressure on um, event managers to be um, doing everything right um, and considering that risk beforehand and um, sort of using social media as a customer service tool while the event's happening. So if someone is complaining about something, it's um, you know having someone monitoring that and then letting the event team know what that complaint's about, making sure that's being fixed quickly and making sure someone's responding on social media so you're not sort of um, just having the one message out there about something going wrong. So um, while social can be good, it can also be um, detrimental.